They entered the arena knowing this night would most likely define their season. Unity, trust, discipline, and loyalty. The Nittany Lions had everything they needed to win on the road. Joe used to say that there, there's no such thing as luck. And that luck is equal to a lot of hard work and an opportunity. And that's what a lucky person is. Mozzie. Grizz, T-Rock. Evo. It's a humble thing, you know? Maurice Humphrey. Nittany Nation. We are. We are Penn State. We are Penn State. Big Ten first place. Big Ten first place. Oh, what's a disgrace. Yeah. Bleed blue, man. I would never switch place. We icon. Joe Pye, yeah, he's an icon. We are. Cavaletti, yeah, he's an icon. We are. We are. We are icons. Yeah. James Franklin, icon. Yeah, yeah. Bleed blue. Bleed blue. Icon. Yeah, yeah. Bleed blue. Bleed blue. Icon. Yeah, yeah. Saquon. Saquon. Icon. We are. LJ. LJ. Icon. We are. Yeah, he's an icon. Pat Chambers, icon. Look. I got the glow, now you know yeah. Feel it in my heart, feel it in my soul Woo. Swag on deck, okay, now you know My swag on deck, okay, now you know uh. Nine with it, Trace Throw it deep, got a nine with it, Boom. Trace We icon, 110,000 white out Woo. I got the glow when the night's out yeah, yeah. Bleed blue Bleed blue Icon yeah, yeah. Bleed blue Bleed blue yeah, yeah. Icon Mukai soon to be an icon Joe Wan going deep from Tommy Touchdown We are We are you know what's to get on, Joe Pye lives through Franklin, we, we, we are, we are, Icon, yeah, yeah. Bleed, bleed blue, bleed blue, Icon, yeah, yeah. Lil' Bar, yeah, he a icon. icon, Mike Rob, yeah, he a icon, icon. Holly, yeah, he a icon. icon, we are, we are icons. Joe laid out a guiding set of principles for us to live by, to have an internal confidence in yourself and anything that you do, and that through that hard work and sacrifice, there's no limit to the things that you can achieve. destined to do great things and with hard work and sacrifice there's no limit to what you can achieve hey what's up my name is jordan norwood i am a 2008 graduated graduate of penn state university um, played all four years there at penn state with uh, under joe paterno um, i'm coming to you from denver colorado where i live with my uh, wife Aaliyah and two kids, Francine and Isaiah. Um, I played seven, seven and a half years in the NFL and I finished up my career here in Denver. Uh, I played my last three seasons here. Uh, retired last season, at the end of last season. And uh, yeah, we've made our home here. Uh, Mo asked me to, to chat with you guys and uh, talk a little bit about my experience playing with Joe and learning from Joe. And um, talk a little bit about how I feel about um, the current state of Penn State football, uh, which I'm excited about. But um, yeah, with no further ado, I, I would love to uh, tell you a little bit of my, about my experience um, as a student athlete at Penn State. Um, I had the pleasure uh, and privilege of playing under Joe Paterno for all four years. And um, also as, with having my dad on the coaching staff, um, he was there. Um, we moved to State College when I was a sophomore in high school and uh, so I got to learn a little bit about the football program and uh, a little bit about the Paterno family also uh, before I even stepped foot um, on campus as a student. Um, while I was at Penn State, um, one of my big um, wantings was to play basketball. Um, I was there on a football scholarship but 
I also wanted to play basketball and so that involved me going into Joe's office and asking him uh, face to face if I can go play basketball um, even though I was there on a football scholarship and I remember being very nervous uh, to go in there and ask him for some reason I thought uh, he was going to give me at least give me a hard time about it um, but he didn't uh, to say the least he uh, encouraged me to in, he encouraged me to he also encouraged me to, to to do a year of school first before I played basketball uh, to make sure that I could handle the academics with football uh, before I added another sport onto it um, but he also said that you know um, you need to play um, because if you have this urge to do it right now um, and you don't or I don't let you Joe said then you'll, you'll regret it down the road so um, I think that uh, just that interaction that one of many interactions I had with Joe uh, showed a little bit of his character his grace his wisdom um, and for myself it, it gave me a great perspective on um, living without regret and how to uh, if you have the urge to do something, uh, even though it might be a risk, even though uh, you might be a little unsure about it, um, how you should go for it. Um, because otherwise, you know, um, 10, 15 down, years down the road, you might, you might be a little bit uh, regretful that you didn't go for it. Um, so that's, that's one of many stories I have, just like everybody has that just played for Joe. Um, that's one of many stories I have and um, one that really sticks with me. Um, just because it's, it's one of the one of the few actually interactions that I had with Joe on a, a very personal le personal level uh, in his office, just the two of I, uh, the two of us, and um, it's, it's just memorable for me personally. Um, as far as the football program right now, I'm very excited about it, as I'm sure everybody is. Uh, coming off a great season, uh, football-wise, and um, having some of the best players in college football. Um, I don't even need to name names with that one. I think we know who, who the best, one of the best players I've ever seen ever in college football is. And uh, it was a joy to watch Saquon play this year in the past few years. Uh, and I'm hoping that he lands in Denver uh, so I can watch him up close. But um, I, without having met uh, Coach Franklin too many times, um, I think he's a character individual and he's somebody that uh, I look forward to being a coach at Penn State. Uh, for the years to come. Um, for myself, without having met them, uh, I like to measure people by uh, kind of their fruit and um, by me saying that I mean uh, the players that come through his program and uh, just um, if Saquon and guys like Deshaun Hamilton, if those guys are a measure of the integrity and the character uh, that's to come out of the Penn State football program under James Franklin, then I'm very excited about it. Um, I think all of us can say that um, we see Saquon play and our, our just we just think he's incredible, of course, because he is. But then after the game, when we see the interview and uh, just hear this, this kid's character and love for the game and love for his teammates, um, it just, it just, it automatically makes you Penn State proud. And um, that's what I'm looking forward to most, honestly, uh, with, with James Franklin at the the head of things. Um, I mean, of course, I, I hope, like everyone else, that uh, wins keep coming and that there's Big Ten championships and uh, national championships down the road. But um, I'm excited about the character of the program, uh, maintaining the integrity um, of the student athletes there at Penn State. Um, and I hope now that I'm retired from football that I can uh, get back to State College and, um, and see a game and uh, visit with Coach Franklin a little bit more and meet some of these younger players and uh, do all that. Uh, but for now I'm in Denver. Uh, I have a beanie on but it's 70 degrees out. I think it's snowing back on the East Coast so sorry for y'all. Um, my buddy Mo told me I should show you this. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus. Let's see here. That's our, our Super Bowl ring from 2015 Super Bowl out here in Denver. Is that focusing? Who knows? Scoot it back a little bit.
Peace out. Hi, I'm Brandon Short, number 43 and former captain of Penn State's 1998 and 1999 football teams, and thanks for having me at Nittany Nation. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Eric, Maurice, and all the other administrators at Nittany Nation for inviting me out here today and let me spend a little bit of time with you. Um, the questions that they asked me to answer are what I learned from Joe Paterno and my thoughts on Coach Franklin and, and the current staff. So I'll start with Joe. What I learned from him, let me count the ways. What, what most people don't realize is that Joe laid out a guiding set of principles for us to live by. And it's not just the football team, the entire university. And his success on the football field just allowed him to have that platform to deliver those guiding principles. Number one, to have class and dignity in everything that you do. Number two, to make an impact on in the classroom, in the community, and everything that you touch to try to be a force for positive change. And number three, that hard work and sacrifice are paramount. And with hard work and sacrifice, there's no limit to what you can achieve. Joe used to say that, that there, there's no such thing as luck. And that luck is equal to a lot of hard work and an opportunity. And that's what a lucky person is. Um, he built a culture of excellence around these principles that were unique to Penn State, that performance in the classroom was far more important than a performance on the football field because he always told us our football careers will end no matter who you are, but how you do in the classroom will set the stage for the rest of your life. Another point is being on time and that God only gives us all a short time on earth and that it, the most disrespectful thing you can do is to waste someone else's time. We used to have something called Joe time, meaning that on the, uh, the meetings would, would be scheduled to start at five o'clock, but Joe would come in and start a meeting 10 minutes early every time. So the meeting would start at, at, five, at four, uh, 4.50. So sometimes you would have guys sitting in meetings a half an hour before the meeting would start, and, and some people would be late when they showed up five minutes early. Um, he would always also teach us never take shortcuts because in, in life, shortcuts lead to failure. We would be at bowl games, and shortcuts mean not walking through the grass. We would come out of a, come out onto the come out of the uh, facility, and the practice field would be right to our left. But the sidewalk would be a block up. He would have the entire team walk a block up and out and over and out out of their way in order to get to a field that's three yards away to remind us that we never take shortcuts. You know the 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 third thing. I guess that, that's probably the most important to me is that uh, it's something that uh, strives that I strive to continue to do is believing deep down that you're destined to do great things. I have a sign that's here in my house. I want to take this time to show this to you, and, and this is just a constant reminder that to have an internal confidence in yourself and anything that you do, and that. Through that hard work and sacrifice, there's no limit to the things that you can achieve. So now on to, to Coach Franklin and what I think about him. Coach Franklin has done an amazing job winning at Penn State. He's come in and won the Big Ten Championship, had two 11-win seasons back-to-back, -back, maybe a, a number one pick overall in the draft. But I'm far more impressed with what Coach Franklin has been able to do off the field because he's been able to win and, and w change the culture of the team, but still maintain the, the, the core principles of Penn State. All those guys have had class and dignity. You know, the, I met Marcus Allen, and that my, he floored my wife and how open and caring and how much of a good guy he was. All, those, all the guys that I've met, that they are Penn State people. Even though they didn't play under Joe, they're playing under Coach Franklin. Those, those same lessons carry on. He emphasizes the importance of, of graduating and performance in the, in the classroom and, and hard work and sacrifice it are every, are surround everything that Coach Franklin does. You know, one, one thing that really impressed me, when I went in to, to visit the team at, before the Michigan, last, Michigan game last year, which was a great game, <laughs> um, there was a mannequin walk, as you walk into the squad room so there's a uh, there's a 
team meeting room where everyone goes and meets every week and there's a, a large mannequin and that mannequin wasn't of a pro football player, wasn't of somebody making a sack. There was a mannequin that had a cap and gown and, and surrounded by blue and white guys in their in football uniforms, emphasizing the importance of, of graduating. So it's those same principles that are passed on from, from Paterno to Franklin that, that makes us Penn State, which makes Penn State such a special place. To me, in my opinion, what Coach Franklin's been able to accomplish on and off the field makes him the best coach in the country, and I think we're lucky to have him here at Penn State. Thanks for having me here on Nittany Nation. I hope I can come back and share some more stories and spend more time with you. Um, thanks for having me, and we are. Mizey, evoke, evoke. Nittany Nation. Yikes! It's a Humphrey thing, you know? Okay, uh, pick a side, pick a side. I'm walking through the tunnel, feeling butter, blue and white. I'm about to go, yikes! I hope you have a camera. I'm a showstopper. KJ Hamler, and yay yikes, I'm a human joystick like Mike, it's a thriller when them lights come on that night, I'm about to rush for miles like Sanders, I'm about to 2K like Johnson, I'm going number one Kajana, I'm about to truck stick, I'm Franco, they ain't know it's a jungle up in Happy Valley, we back to back, Courtney and LeVar, you know that we are, cause we set the bar, yikes, all black nights, blue and white. Staters. My name is John Bronson. I'm a Penn State graduate and also football letterman of the class from 2000 to 2004. And uh, I'd like to thank Maurice Humphrey and also Eric Harold uh, for giving us this platform to be able to speak about our experience at Penn State and also um, talk a little bit about Joe Paterno. And, uh, you know, I have a few key things that I'd like to speak about. And uh, I, I tell you what, being a kid from Kent, Washington, uh, to be able to come to Penn State is I'm forever grateful for. You know, it's an opportunity that most don't have, especially being from the West Coast and being from Washington, to be able to go to such a great, prestigious school like Penn State and to get an education and also have a great uh, football uh, career there as well. Joe was one of those people that really spoke of the importance of education and really uh, made sure that we lived it out. I remember when uh, I came from my recruiting trip and, and he was talking to my parents and, you know, he he made it crystal clear that, look, you know, I'm not sure how I would pan out as a football player at Penn State, but, you know, he assured that uh, I would get an education. That's something that I know my parents really appreciated and also you know, I appreciate as well. Um, you know, a lot of things that Joe put into place uh, maybe other schools, other other programs would uh, have let slide, like uh, going to class and uh, and being in class on time. I remember we had class checkers, and and they literally would show up at the class and check to make sure that you not only were in class, but that you were there on time. Um, and things like study hall, uh, we would have as freshmen, we have to go to study two or three hours a, uh, a night after practice, and so. These small things, these things that Joe put into place for us to be able to have success uh, was, was so important, uh, and especially later in our lives as we would uh, know it, to be able to utilize uh, and become better men and also better pillars in society. And so, uh, you know, another big thing was the importance of drive and hard work. You know, Joe was, I, I remember sitting in a squad meeting, and a squad meeting is basically where we all come together and uh, right before a, a practice or, or a big event or something. 
yeah, as a team. And uh, and I was sitting in the in the front row there, and 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 he had made this comment about having it in, in three places, and you have to have it in your 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 mind, and also in your heart, and also in your, in your body, and uh, and you could not just have it in one place, one of the three. It had to be in all three, and so driving, uh, being the best, working uh, as hard as you can to obtain those uh, goals to have it in your 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 mind and your heart and also in in your in your body was something that is overly important and Joe stress to make sure that we could be the best that we could be the importance of humility uh, you know this is something that again uh, a lot of coaches a lot of uh, mentors maybe would have overlooked the importance of humility. Joe stressed that, and and you could tell it um, every time we went to an away game. We had to wear suits, um, even our uniforms were were plain. You know, we had no names in our jerseys. We had wore black shoes. Uh, we, as you guys know, you know, had had basic white helmets with a stripe. Uh, everything that we did, even as freshmen uh, at that time, we couldn't uh, talk to the media. So everything we did was about being humble, and uh, and 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 being a a a force that wasn't necessarily a, a talking force, but one you showed by action. And these are things that Joe really helped us to understand. And quite frankly, uh, again, as we know, it helped. I, I can show you a lot of guys throughout their lives and uh, outside of after Penn State and things like that. You know. I want to talk a little bit about Coach Franklin, and I had the chance to meet Coach Franklin uh, one time uh, a few years back, and uh, met him in his office. And you know, three things that I really liked about Coach Franklin, I really got out of is that number one, um, he's caring, and you can really feel it that he's a, a caring person, um, not only with his, his own family but also with with the players. And, um, and 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 all of his staff, and he really really feels, it. and that's something I really respect about him. Relatable, uh, you know, being able to uh, relate to uh, his players is something that is overly important, and that you can really see uh, that characteristic out in in everyday uh, operations. And he's passionate, just overly passionate about about what he's doing and and the and the job that he has and. And uh, not only with the football team, but bringing the community together and making people better and, and, and help making lives better. And these are things that are that I really respect from Coach Franklin. I really believe that uh, that he'll have continued success uh, just uh, on the path that he is, that he has been doing. And so, with all of that, you know, I have been so privileged and, and blessed to be able to be amongst a lot of uh, people, a lot of Penn Staters, and I, I, I cannot be more thankful for the opportunity um, from everybody, from all of my coaches uh, who, you know, drove us every day. Um, uh, obviously, Coach Paterno and, and uh, you know, Coach Johnson and, and, and Jay. And, and there's so many coaches that I've, uh, Coach Norwood, a lot of coaches that I've been able to, been privileged to have during my time at Penn State. All my teammates, I mean, without the brotherhood of, 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 of of my teammates and uh you know we I, i'd be in a different place and so uh being able to help keep us accountable and 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 help uh each other grow um all the staff i mean everybody you know from the academic from helping uh, me to be able to graduate to the uh, the training staff to the strength strength conditioning uh staff to everybody counselors um, the whole nine, without all of you, uh, I, uh, me personally, and I can tell you many other teammates, you know, would have uh, been a different road, a different path. And, and all, also uh, the fans, without the fans, without you guys, us as players, you know, we, you know, we'd be a different place. So we'd like to thank all of you guys and really from the bottom of our heart, I really appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak with you guys. And we are Penn State. Hey, good morning, Nittany Nation. Sean McHugh coming to you uh, from actually outside of Ann Arbor. 
don't tell anyone, but uh, my wife and my two children and I, we settled down outside of Detroit, Michigan, and we're uh, about 10, 15 miles uh, directly outside of Ann Arbor. So we're kind of here in the uh, land of the enemy, <clears throat> but we love it. And I'm honored to be able to uh, spend a couple minutes with you here this morning. Uh, again, Sean McHugh um, graduated from Penn State in 2004, um, so 2003 would have been my last football season. And um, first off, thank you to uh, Mo, Eric, everyone else out there who makes uh, Nittany Nation possible. Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. It's a great way for us uh, alumni, fans, um, you know, anyone involved with Penn State, um, not just football, but all athletics and the university in general. So um, I know it's kind of a thankless job, but I'll extend my gratitude to, uh, to you guys. You guys are doing a wonderful job, so thank you. That being said, um, Mo approached me. Um, obviously, we were teammates there for a couple of years back in the early 2000s and asked if I would uh, share a couple of thoughts on both Joe um, and then uh, James Franklin and the current state of Penn State. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and jump into it. And I think mine might be a little bit different this morning. Um, you know, the question posed to me is, what lessons did you learn from Joe Paterno? And I kind of had a unique experience at Penn State. Um, not completely unique to me, but, you know, a little bit different. And um, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> when I was a sophomore at Penn State, I lost my mother um, in February to a, uh, a battle with cancer. And, um, you know, so one of the things I think about immediately is, you know, Penn State, that time in my life, it was obviously, um, you know, one of the most challenging times of my life being a 19, 20 year old kid um, away from home and dealing with that loss um, and everything that goes with it. <clears throat> but, you know, the first thing when anyone asks me, tell me a Joe Paterno story, um, I always go right back to that moment. Um, and not just Joe, but the support from uh, Joe's staff, my teammates, uh, the Penn State community. I truly, truly um, don't know if there's any other university out there, um, any other group of people, um, whether it's fans, administration, whatever it is that um, would have handled that situation the way Joe Pa um, and my Penn State family did. And um, I don't think I get through it the way I did and go on to be able to, you know, finish Penn State and have a uh, career in the NFL for a few years as well. Um, one thing that always sticks out about that time um, is being at my hometown in uh, Chagrin Falls, Ohio, which is about 25 miles uh, east of Cleveland. It's about a four-hour drive from Penn State. Um, I remember being away from Penn State, obviously, to, uh, to deal with the loss of my mother and the services and um, all those things. And I'll never forget um, showing up to uh, the church, St. Joan of Arc in Chagrin Falls, um, for my mom's funeral service. And when we pulled into the church, I remember seeing two of these big, you know, Greyhound-type tour buses. Um, had no idea, you know, what was going on. And as my family and I, we park in the church and we get out and the bus is from the doors open. And uh, I'll never forget it, man. I still have chills when I even talk about it. But seeing anywhere from, you know, 50 to 60 um, of my Penn State brothers walk off that bus. Um, they drove in that morning um, just to support a teammate. Drove back that day. Um, so we're talking about eight hours in a bus for an hour long service um, just to support, you know, one of their brothers. Um, and when I talk about Joe, um, I bring that up because that's the kind of culture that Joe created at Penn State. And it's the one thing I've taken with me, um, which is really how we treat other people. Um, you know, football is a game. Um, it's provided a lot of amazing things for me, uh, my family, and a lot of other people out there. Um, but what makes football special, it's not the wins and losses. Um, it's not Super Bowl trophies sitting behind you. Um, although those, those things are, are fantastic and um, a blast and a blessing. Um, but it's the people. Um, and Joe... Um, was people first. Um, you know, we talk about the grand experiment. We talk about the emphasis on academics. Um, but I look at Joe and I think about how to be a man, um, you know, how to be a, a husband, how to be a father, how to be a son, a brother, a teammate. Um, those are the things I took away from Penn State, um, more so than anything else, really. Um, you know, we can talk about all the football, the hard work. Um, those things are all true. Um, but really, when I, when I think about you know, those four years in State College and in my life today, um, God, almost 20 years ago, I first arrived on campus. And, you know, those principles that I try to instill in my own children, um, <clears throat> the way I try to carry myself, and I'm certainly not perfect, but um, I try to take those values that Joe taught us um, and apply them to my everyday life. Um, but again, to kind of sum it up, it's all about um, treating others well, you know, and, and being there for other people, 
um, and lifting people up, you know, and, you know, the old expression, iron sharpens iron, it couldn't be more true. And I learned that at Penn State, and I, uh, I definitely consider it a blessing to have spent four years there, you know, four crucial years developing into a young man, uh, making some mistakes along the way, but um, having the unwavering support of Joe, um, his staff, and my teammates, I'm forever grateful. Um, so that's Joe Paterno for you. That's, that's what I think about it is that difficult time in my life and having that support of my Penn State family. Because um, I don't know if I'm here doing this interview today, if I'm anywhere else besides Penn State, um, you know, with those people. So that's my Joe Pa. Now on to um, the, the current Nittany Lions. Um, and first, I got to say, man, what a great time to be an Nittany Lion fan, alumni. Um, and I'm not just talking about football, um, but all the sports. You know, I see a, we got a basketball team, men's basketball team with 20 wins. We have a wrestling team um, who can do <laughs> nothing but win national championships. Um, and all the other sports. It's, it's been a fantastic time. Um, I've enjoyed the heck out of it. As I've gotten older and uh, kind of settled into a life, I've been able to uh, spend more time getting back into Penn State. Um, you know, my kids are 11 and 8 years old now. Um, huge Penn State fans, even stuck here in Michigan. Um, so what an awesome time, you know, to be a Penn State fan. And, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, now, football uh, at Penn State now specifically and, and James Franklin. And <clears throat> I'll be honest, um, I was probably, um, you know, internally um, could not have been more excited, um, you know, for James Franklin to arrive on campus. Um, and really the freshness um, and the excitement and the energy he brought back to Penn State. Um, you know, I think about Penn State and you know, what's Penn State to me, it's not the uniforms. Um, it's not the, the no names. It's not the black shoes. Um, it's not all those things. You know, those are how people identify Penn State. Um, but Penn State's something inside of you. Um, it's the way you carry yourself. It's the expectations. It's how you treat other people. Um, and I think James Franklin stands for that. Um, and I thank him for that. I think, you know, the class of the players um, he has right now is absolutely incredible. Um, and, you know, and obviously props to Bill O'Brien for, for bridging that gap. Um, you know, I mean, did an incredible job. And, and those Penn State players who, who stuck through it. Um, but I was fortunate to, uh, to go back to Happy Valley last year for the Nebraska game. I brought my son and my brother-in-law and his son and we, uh, we made the trip here from Michigan and got in on Friday and I was lucky enough to tour the new facility. Uh, it was my first time getting to see it and I see the lights and I see how modern everything is and um, it couldn't be more different um, than when I was there, um, again, just 15, 20 years ago, um, but I couldn't be more excited about it. I love the energy he's created. Um, I love the atmosphere he's created. Um, and again, it's for me, I don't care if the guys repel in uh, for the games from helicopters. Um, as long as they're putting that product on the field that, you know, is the Penn State expectation um, and those young men are conducting themselves, um, you know, in the Penn State way. And that's the one thing I think that, you know, everyone um, since Joe, not just head coaches, but the staff have incorporated and brought with them. And that's never changed. Um, and that's what I love about Penn State football. Um, like, again, change uniforms. You change whatever you want. Um, but don't change, you know, this Penn State in here because um, those are the things that are going to carry these young men um, throughout their lives and the lessons they're going to learn. And again, I applaud James Franklin. I applaud his staff. Um, it's a heck of a time to be a Penn State fan. Um, it's a heck of a time to be a Penn State letterman. Um, really, really exciting things. Um, but I love it, man. I, I love it. It's, it's brought that excitement back to my house on Saturdays, um, especially here when we're right outside of Ann Arbor. Um, you know, my son loves wearing his Penn State jersey to school on Fridays if he's not wearing his own football jersey. Um, so it's, it's an awesome thing. And again, uh, Mo, Eric, everyone there at Nittany Nation, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to be a part of this. Um, I think it's a fantastic thing, and I really hope it continues to catch on and we get, you know, more and more players who want to spend a few minutes uh, sharing some of their stories and thoughts. So I appreciate it. But uh, I got to get back to it, guys. Have an awesome week. Um, I appreciate it again. Mo, Eric, um, fantastic series you're doing. I hope to see you guys uh, all some point here coming up in the fall. Lego. Lego. Uh. Look. Mazi. Okay. Uh. Chip. September 29th. Chip. We are part in the Red Sea. Chip. We are ready to bleed blue. It's funeral music, but we in all white. The stadium lit, cause it's a white out. I got the glow, you know, when the night's out. 
110,000 got my back, so I'ma pin my ears back like a pit on a tap. I leave it all on the field tonight, guts for glory. Okay. It's grimy in the trenches, you can call it nori. Woo. Nutcracker, Shit. nutcracker, nutcracker. Shit. Sorry, not sorry, Ohio, your nuts crack, bruh. Okay. The lion is the king of the jungle. Nittany's our princess, beaver's our home. We must protect this house by all means. All means. So we are part in the Red Sea. Oh, Hey, this is Brandon Noble, and I am today's interview with the Lion. It's a special Easter slash April Fools uh, edition of Interview with the Lion. I'm really excited to be on it. Uh, Mo asked me uh, late last week, and it's taken me all the way until Easter morning to get this done because of life and uh, all the fun things that come with it, and also dealing with technology. Look, I'm not going to lie to you, I know how to use my phone, um, but to kind of video it and get it at an angle where uh, it's not just me holding the phone looking like I'm doing a selfie all the time. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge, so right now my phone is propped up on the top of a lampshade. Hopefully it doesn't fall over while we're doing this. Uh, and uh, hopefully the battery doesn't die, which is always a possibility too. So uh, again, Brandon Noble uh, played, Penn, bleh, played at Penn State uh, from 1992 to 1997, graduated in 1998 with a degree uh, in administration of justice, which I believe they now call criminal justice, so that's what most people call it. But for some reason at the time at Penn State, it was administration of justice, and that's what I got my degree in. Yes, it took me six years uh, after the 1997 Fiesta Bowl and my uh, release from Penn State football. Uh, I realized that there were a lot of great drink specials downtown and kind of wandered off a little bit got lost uh, in the social life and uh, was brought back to reality very quickly when I got that phone call saying I did not graduate and then having to deal with my mom, my dad, Donnie Farrell, and Joe Paterno. Uh, so I did graduate and uh, it was not a lot of fun dealing, going through that, uh, that situation, but it was, it was one of the things that I think I'll talk about. I mean, one of the things that I'm supposed to answer is, you know, what did I learn you know, what are the life lessons that I got from playing at Penn State for Joe Paterno? And there's, there's way too many of them, to be completely honest with you. And to pick just one, I think, is is tough. And I've, I've done like five of these videos so far. And, you know, whether it's the phone falling or the battery dying or the volume not working or me just messing up, uh, it's been a bit difficult trying to figure out what I want to talk about. And I think the, I think the biggest thing is you you learn how to be a man. I mean, you learn how to be someone who accepts responsibility for his actions, right? Does what he's supposed to do when he's supposed to do it. Uh, does things the right way to the best of his ability. I th those are all things that, that are super important in, in raising my own two sons and my daughter too, for that matter. But I think that that's really from that kind of stretch from 18 to 22 when you're playing college football and you're in that environment uh, to have somebody that is constantly nitpicking about those types of things carries over to the rest of your life. I mean, look, I, I was very, very fortunate to spend nine years in the NFL after I left Penn State and then to spend another eight years coaching football. Uh, and, and they're all things, all the things that I learned at Penn State, I applied at some point or another over those um how many years did I say that was, you know, those uh, nine and eight. Uh, so what's that, 17? Again, there's applying that Penn State degree right there. Uh, math is not my strong suit, which is probably why I ended up in uh, administration of justice. But where was I going with that? So, you know, just kind of being a man and, and being able to, to, you know, handle your business, for lack of a better term, uh, is really one of the things that I took from there. Because they were constantly 
pushing you to do things the right way. And I'm not just talking about on the football field. I mean, look, there were tiny little minute details that on the football field you were like, why in the hell does this matter? Why am I doing that? But it was the same way off the field, right? The idea of being early, right? Not being late. To this day, you know, 20 some odd years later, like I am terrified of being late to anything. Being late to a, an appointment, being late to picking my kids up, uh, being late to a doctor's office visit, you know, whatever it is, right? You know, in, and I try and instill that in my own children. Uh, and uh, it's something that stuck with me. I think that's the one thing that when you talk to most guys that played for Joe, that was kind of the thing that kept you going, right? You didn't want to walk into that squad meeting two minutes early or five minutes early. I mean, you really wanted to be there seven or eight minutes early. It kind of got a little bit out of control sometimes where you find yourself sitting out 15, 15, 10 minutes early. And next thing you know, you're like, oh man, the problem is Joe would walk in the door. And if it looked like enough guys were there, he would start the meeting. So if you were five minutes early, uh, the meeting might have been going on for four or five minutes already because most of the team was there and then you were considered late. Uh, but I think it was those kinds of things, those little tiny things, not cutting corners, right? Doing things the right way in the classroom, dealing with other people, uh, being a good person out in the community. Uh, you know, I remember cutting across one of those little, uh, you know, kind of grassy spots in between sidewalks on campus. And uh, Joe saw me. I don't know where he came from. He popped out of a bush or I don't know where he came from. Uh, and having him yell at me, you know, if you're cutting corners here, you're going to cut corners other places. And so for a while, I kind of had this phobia about walking on grass. And so I stayed on the sidewalks. Uh, I've since broken that one. But uh, this, so, so that, that those are, you know, kind of maybe a funny story about it. But I think that at the end of the day, they really force you to grow up and they really force you to go from, you know, being being a kid to, to a young adult, a, a young man when you leave. And and I equate playing for Joe a lot like kind of, you know, dealing with the father, right? And, you know, my old man, God bless him, um, and myself. I mean, I'm a father now myself, right? So I, I look at it from that age too and, and that, that perspective too. And, and, and a lot of times when you're going through things, right, when you're going through the Penn State football program, playing for Joe Paterno, you kind of go, what is going, you know, what is he talking about? Why does this really matter? What, why is he busting my balls about this, right? Why can't I have an earring? Well, I didn't ever want an earring, but why can't I have facial hair? And obviously I have a mustache right now. I had a really big beard yesterday, uh, but that's a whole different story, maybe for a different interview. Definitely not one, uh, not, not today. Um, so needless to say, but, but there's like all these things. There's the same thing with my dad, right? There, there was a time you know, from, from, you know, kind of high school where you, you don't really get what your parents are trying to do. And, and then all of a sudden when you kind of hit 25 or 30 or whatever it is, you go, Oh, I get it. I get what he's saying now. And it's the same thing with Joe, right? All of a sudden you go through that five years with him there and you're like, man, this is ridiculous. But then all of a sudden you're out in the real world and you go, Oh, I get it. Right. When you're sitting there, you know, to a, to a meeting, a staff meeting on time or early, right? And you see those three guys walk in late, right? And the head coach is like, ah, what's this guy doing, right? Or, or whatever, or whatever. In a corporate environment, it doesn't matter. But it was those little things and being disciplined and self-motivated and holding yourself accountable and understanding that for every action, there's a reaction, right? There are going to be repercussions, whether they're positive or negative, right? Depending on the action. Uh, all things that I learned there, and I, I, I was I'm fortunate, you know, my old man taught me those things too. Uh, so it was really reinforced uh, at Penn State by Joe and his staff, which is a good thing because, uh, you know, obviously when you're 16 years old, your dad doesn't know anything. Uh, I know that because I have a 16 year old now and I know nothing. Um, and I also know that at about 25, 30, you know, my kids are all going to think I'm pretty smart. I hope anyways. Uh, so I don't know if that answered the question, but I know that I've talked probably way too long about that. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and the next thing, which is actually probably a little bit easier, I think, and maybe a little bit, um, cleaner, I maybe won't ramble as much, but maybe not because I have a tendency to ramble like I'm doing right now. Uh, you know, my thoughts on kind of the current state of the union, uh, of Penn state football and coach Franklin and his staff and what those guys have done. And I, I've been really fortunate uh, I'm going to give a, a shameless plug right now. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been getting into the broadcasting industry and, and uh, I've started a, a show that's actually kind of caught hold and, and we're on TV and all sorts of craziness. 
uh, called the obligatory PSU pregame show. And you can find us on PCN at 10 o'clock on Saturday mornings. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, a website, all that good stuff. Uh, Instagram account, uh, all that stuff that kind of goes over my head. But uh, we're there and follow us. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. we got a podcast that we just started. but uh, So I've got to really kind of study the team and look at the team from a different perspective. And uh, having got to know James Franklin just a little bit over the last couple of years, uh, I'm really excited about what's going on out there. I think the, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, obviously things are different now, and everybody knows that. But but I think the biggest thing that I'm uh, excited about is the way that this staff recruits. Recruiting has changed so much in the last 20 years, right? In the last 10 years, even that I think this is where Coach Franklin really gets it. And he does an amazing job, and he's hired guys, and he's brought in a staff of great recruiters, which in college football is is a huge part of it because recruiting is the lifeblood of your program. I mean, you've got to go out, find talent, and compete with all the other big boys to get those guys to come play at Penn State. And I think James Franklin and I think those guys have done that, and they're going to continue to do that. And those are all great things for our program. They also develop players. I think when you watch these guys come in as freshmen – and as they leave, and we're starting to see it now with these guys that are leaving and going into the NFL and what they're doing at the combine and what they're doing on the football field uh, shows you how well prepared these guys are uh, by the time they leave, what, how they develop from, again, that 18-year-old kid to that 20 to 22-year-old young man as they leave the program. They kind of hit their stride their junior and, season, junior and senior year, uh, which, is, which is the way that it should be. You know, so I'm really excited about watching Coach Franklin and the staff continue to recruit. I don't follow recruiting very much. It, it drives me a little bit bonkers, kind of the way that it works now. It's, it's your typical kind of old man, you know, crotchety, upways, upways, walking uphill both ways um, in the snow back in my day kind of nonsense. Uh, and fighting the way that recruiting is now doesn't do anybody any good. Coach Franklin and those guys do an amazing job. I think the program's in an interesting spot. I think obviously we're losing Saquon Barkley this year, uh, who's a generational talent. He's the kind of guy that uh, only comes along every so often. And that's obviously going to hurt the team. I think the, the biggest thing that I'm looking for this year is how does that offensive line play? There are two keys to this season, to the 2018 season coming up. And the first one is the offensive line to me. The O-line has to be better. They have gotten better and they've done a better job. That's a young group of guys that is slowly maturing. And as guys become redshirt juniors, redshirt seniors, you know, kind of your fourth, fifth year in the program, or even your third, fourth year for some guys, that's when offensive linemen really come into their own. And I think we're getting to that point with this group. I think there's also starting to be some competition there, which is really, really big because of the way that the staff is recruited. They brought in guys that are pushing each other. All those things are good things, but at the end of the day, uh, we'll really know who we are as a football team kind of mid-September, early October, uh, when that group has an opportunity to gel and has to really go out and get tested against the likes of Ohio State, Michigan, the big boys in the Big Ten. Uh, and to me, the, the season hinges on them. Uh, no matter how good uh, you know McSorley is in that receiving core and Sanders and the guys with the ball in their hand, uh, the big guys win and lose the tough football games for you. And I, and I think they're really important. And the, the other side of the ball to me is, you know, what – how do we develop the middle of our defense? You know, from defensive tackles to middle linebacker to safety. Uh, that to me is, is, you know, the middle of your defense is the most important part. Uh, I think we've, we've got some skill guys. I'm hearing a lot of great things about the athletic ability that we have on that side of the ball right now. But can those guys transition, become full-time playmakers, right? Can they go out and play 60 minutes? Can they go out and play 12 games? Can they go out and do it all on the field all the time against – the biggest opponents in the biggest environments make the biggest stops that they have to. And really that kind of defensive tackle to middle linebacker, the safety spot to me is going to be really, really big. Who shows up, who rises up, who becomes the guy this year at each level of our defense to make plays and make sure that, uh, that we win those football games. Again, that, that's what it's all about for those guys. So 
Uh, I'm going to wrap up there. I have no idea where this all just went. I'm just looking at the clock at the top of my phone, and it's been almost 15 minutes. So I apologize for this being so long. Um, but it's been a lot of fun, a lot of rambling. I love State College. I love Penn State. If you get an opportunity uh, to check out uh, our TV show, the obligatory PSU pregame show, uh, it's on PCN, like I said, at 10 o'clock on Saturday mornings. Uh, the other thing is we've got a podcast coming out. Uh, we're on episode three right now. Really excited about that. It gives us a bit of an opportunity to deep dive a little bit more into, into all things Happy Valley. It's not just about football, which I think is really cool. Uh, I'm learning a lot about Penn State. I'm learning a lot about the area from the guys on the show who were, uh, for lack of a better term, regular students there and got to experience a little bit more than I did. So uh, that's it. I hope everybody has a great Easter. Uh, have a great spring. Hopefully it doesn't snow here tomorrow like it's supposed to. I'm ready for some nice weather. Definitely excited for uh, spring ball up in Happy Valley. Going to make it up to the blue-white game. Uh, if you see me, grab me, stop me, say hi. Uh, I won't have the mustache. My wife and daughter will be back at the end of the week. So the mustache will be gone. Happy Easter. Good morning. My name is Terrence Phillips, wide receiver at Penn State from 01 to 04. Um, like to give a special shout out to Maurice and the Nittany Nation for giving me this opportunity to speak with you this morning. I uh, just want to give you a quick story um, from Joe Pa. We were uh, in Haluba Hall doing practice, and as uh, usually go up, it's the receivers against the DBs, um, linebackers against the running backs, and the linemen against the linemen. So Joe Paterno, he usually walks around. Uh, and checks out everybody, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And on this particular play, I was running a post route. And that's deep. That's uh, We run about 10 yards, and then you, you take it to the corner. So uh, quarterback throws it up. I'm going full speed. I catch the ball, and as soon as I go to look up, boom, I run over somebody. And I'm thinking, I'm how – Cause I just beat the the defensive back. How who who was that? There, you know, was it a pad or something that was in the way? And um, as I get up off the ground, Joe Pa's on the ground, and he 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 says, "This is Joe Pa." In Joe Pa's voice, he says, "Phillips, what are you doing?" He says, "You hit like a girl," and uh, everyone started laughing. I mean, this guy that just showed you how tough he was. He gets up. He knocks off the the rubber from the the turf off his clothes and uh, wipes the blood away from his mouth with his handkerchief. He said, "You gotta come harder than that." And uh, <laughs> from that day, I mean, I, I remember that. I'm gonna remember that, you know, to the day I'm I'm gone. But uh, that was a great moment, and it just showed me how tough he was. Um, he also, I loved how he stressed about time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're early, then you're on time. So we had to be 10 minutes prior, 15 minutes prior to everything that we did. Um, and that, that and that sticks with me today. Um, I'm a coach right now at Fayetteville in Fayetteville, North Carolina for the Fayetteville Ducks. I coach my son's AU football team, and we're doing a great job. And uh, that's some of the things I take from him. I instill in them as well. Um and Coach Franklin, uh, great coach, great guy. Um, I love what he's doing with the program. The kids are excited. They seem excited. They seem like they're having fun. And that's what it's all about, you know. When, it, when it's game time, it's seriousness. But uh, you have fun and, and practices and, uh, and everything like that. And it shows that they're, they're out there and they're just playing. They're using their God-given talent to play. So... With that, I would say uh, thank you, and we are Penn State for now and forever. Thank you. So we are going to break through and become an elite program by doing all the little things. It's all the little things. It's all the little things that are going to matter. We have gotten comfortable being great. We will no longer be comfortable being great because we've been knocking at the door long enough.
just as hard and the distance that we've already traveled it's going to be just as hard to get there scratch and claw and fight i give you my word we are going to find a way to take the next step all right who are you and what is your relationship to penn state football uh, rich gardner defensive back class of 03 Third-team All-American, third-round draft choice. Awesome. Thank you. Rich, what are you doing right now with your life? What am I doing right now? I am mentor, teacher, coach, husband, and dad. And uh, also co-founded uh, Maroon Village with my wife. That's a nonprofit organization committed to Cultivate, cultivating healthy environments. Awesome. So this is an interview about um, your experience at Penn State and also a little bit about your relationship with Joe Paterno. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, when did you, when did your football career start? How old were you and where and why? My football career started at the age of 10. Um, Football uh, at that time made sense to me. Football was my balance, and football was uh, you know, what I needed for survival. So you started at age 10. Did you play football in high school? Uh, yes, I played football at Hales Franciscan High School. At the time, Hales Franciscan was one of three high schools founded for black American men played there for three years. So you went to an all-boys school and played on the football team for three years. How uh, how did the team do? <laughs> uh, we were not that successful. Uh, I went to a school that was uh, you know, pretty dominant in basketball and uh, which was dominated uh, by a city, you know, that would place emphasis on basketball. We have great athletes, uh, you know, in that arena. But uh, the success of the football team was, uh, you know, not good. It wasn't even par. But, uh, again, uh, you know, we did win 10 games in three years, but I had a great time. I had love there, and I had some great friends. So your high school experience somewhat prepared you for college. How did you make your way to Penn State? How did I make my way to Penn State? So, uh, you know, before... I started that conversation. I just want to highlight that I did not know Joe Paterno uh, you know, prior to sending my tapes out. Um, but uh, after the senior season, Pops and I decided to you know, give it a push to pursue a dream of mine, was, which was to play Big Ten football. Uh, I really admired the heroes of uh, you know, football and um, especially college football. Charles Woodson was one of my favorite, absolute favorite, you know. And uh, I had dreams of playing Big Ten football. And uh, with the help of my pops, created my own highlight film and sent it out to all the schools. Uh, I had return letters and uh, maybe a return call, but all said that, you know, thank you for my interest, but they were, uh, you know, not looking to add any more uh, players to the roster. So it was uh, more of a thank you, but no thank you. Um, but I don't know. Uh, 
you know, what happened. But next, but my dad made a connection with Kenny Jackson, who was then the wide right receiver coach at Penn State. Um, if you don't know Kenny Jackson, Kenny Jackson is a two-time All-American at Penn State uh, wide receiver and went on to get drafted uh, by the Eagles in the first round. So uh, Pops made a, a deep connection with Kenny Jackson and told him my story. Uh, Kenny, uh, you know, passed uh, the, the word to uh, Jay Paterno, who was the recruiter in the region. So that's how the phone call from Joe Paterno, uh, you know, uh, came about. So you ended up becoming a recruited walk-on from that phone call with Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, upon your arrival at Penn State, you did not receive a scholarship, correct? Correct. So can you talk to us a little bit about your, um, because you ended up leaving on scholarship. Yes. So can you talk to us about what happened in between your walk-on and receiving the scholarship? Um, what did What did you do? Or did you do anything to receive that um, scholarship? Yeah, this is only a 10-minute interview, but uh, I try to keep it shorter. But uh, a lot to say, so I'm going to just try to sum the two stories real quick. Uh, first off, you know, again, most challenging times of my life at Penn State. But, you know, at the end, of course, you know, came out clean. Came out a better person, a better human being, and a man, you know, in a sense. But, uh, you know, fighting for a scholarship. Uh, I felt that my hard work and practice and commitment to the scout team was worthy of some kind of scholarship in the spring. So I uh, came to Joe Paterno about three times between the spring and summer, asking for a scholarship. I said, hey, Joe Paterno, I think I deserve a scholarship. Uh, I actually had to schedule an appointment with the secretary and, uh, you know, and was very, um, you know, forthright, you know, with my request and what that meant to me and my family and trying to, uh, you know, forward. Uh, a way for me to uh, live a dream of mine. Um, uh, the third time, Joe Return looked at me and said, "Hey, he didn't think that I was cut out to, you know, play football. He didn't think I was good enough, and he didn't think I was good enough to play Big Ten football. So at that time, I'm thinking like, hey, I guess I'm bugging him too much, and I just took that as him not thinking that I was worthy of scholarship. So, you know, I took it as a challenge." I respect him for being straightforward. I respect him and uh, you know communicating to me as a human being, and still giving me an opportunity to earn one, even though he didn't think I uh, was that uh, type of athlete. So your relationship with Joe Paterno sounds like you um, you. <sighs> what am I trying to ask here? Talk to us a little bit more about your relationship with Joe Paterno. How about that? Uh -huh. um, tell us anything you feel we should hear as far as who, uh, what kind of an influence or an impact he has had on who you are today. You know, again, I come from an environment, an unresourced environment that, um, you know, was a culture within itself, you know, because, uh, you know, they did some survival. As I mentioned before, football was a survival. So my uh, interaction with Joe Eterno was more of confrontations of lessons, you know, that I feel that we both uh, took, you know, uh, took from. But uh, one instance, a couple instances, one, you know, a few instances I was kicked out of practice, you know, for, um, you know, expressing myself on the field, you know, uh, so to speak. And, um, you know, but I guess I was taken away from... Uh, the uh, uh, what t what Joe Paterno uh, wanted from us, and um, ended up getting kicked out of practice a few times, you know. And another instance was one of my biggest games, the Nebraska game. Uh, I uh, was in the absolute zone that game. I had a great game, outstanding game. It was actually my breakout game, and uh, after returning a forty-two yard interception, um, you know, in which. Brian Norwood, uh, Jordan Norwood, was actually in the corner end zone. And a uh, piece of Jordan Norwood doing great things. Um, Happy for you, brother. But, uh, you know, ended up snatching me uh, at, um, you know, right off the field, grabbing my neck and just, you know, kind of telling me to calm down and just, you know, help me understand, you know, that it's more to it than just me. And there's a team and there's everything that goes with uh, you know, committing yourself to a team. So, 
uh, those two stories that were kind of confrontations that meant a lot and I, I carried with me. Awesome. Mm. That's pretty a, a pretty unique experience you have. Probably not a lot of people could say that they have mm -hmm. spent, you know, such intimate time with um, a, a leader such as Joe Paterno. Uh, if you had one, if there was one lesson you could share with everyone um, that you learned from Joe Paterno, what would you like to share? What would that be? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I think I've touched on it before, but... Um... You know, yes, he was a man of virtue, and yes, he was a man of moral correctness. But one thing I took from him was, hey, this is not about you. You know, there are more powerful things that you can do when you do commit yourself to uh, a team, when you do commit yourself to individuals, you know, that might not align with your beliefs, but if you can identify a common point, you can do powerful things. And that's one thing I took from Joe Paterno, and we did powerful things at Penn State. And those powerful things um, will, uh, you know, will be a part of me for forever. So, so you're a father, which um, probably leaves you with less free time uh, during football season than you are used to, or maybe this is what you're used to now. Um, have you been able to check out Penn State within the last few years? And you know they've ha made a lot of changes. What are you? What are your thoughts on the current state of Penn State football? Uh, you know, I think that Coach Franklin has done a wonderful job at Penn State. I think that he took the uh, you know baton that the former players uh, you know speak of. You know um, that that virtue that. The, the, the moral correctness, you know, uh, the values, you know, that we speak of. I think that, you know, James, uh, Coach Franklin took that and uh, done a great job in that respect. Uh, you know, outside the wins, uh, you know, at this point, you know, uh, I'm in a position where I am a husband and dad and really understand the value of, of, of being a teacher. And, um, and that's one thing that I see in James and Coach Franklin. He's an outstanding teacher, and he is a great ambassador of Penn State program and um, heading in a great uh, direction. Awesome. And speaking of teacher, I know there's one more teacher that you often talk about as being an influence and an impact or having an impact on um, the person you are today, and that scrap. You do you want to share a little bit about oh, your man. relationship with scrap? Yeah, scrappy do. Um, oh yeah, and uh, yeah, great scrap, great job, scrap. You know, at uh, you know doing anything at UCLA, but um, you know we had many run-ins, many run-ins, and uh, you know after that breakout game, uh, he. You know, Scrap did pull me to the side, you know, in meeting rooms, and uh, he talked to me about what it, it, what it means, you know, the responsibility that I will have to take on, you know, as uh, um, a, a leader on the team, as a starter on the team, and I definitely appreciate him for, you know, talking to me in that respect, and again, you know, talking to me as a human being, and I definitely appreciate that, uh, but, you know, Scrap is great, man, he, uh, very hard worker, you know, and uh, great inspiration. So, you know, piece of scrap, we got to catch up sometime, brother. What is one lesson you would share that you learned from scrap? Oh, man. <laughs> if all goes wrong, always feel sky, brother. Feel sky. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you. It's been all a right. pleasure interviewing you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Up Penn State. My name is Derek Tolles. I was number two linebacker uh, for the football team. I was also the defensive captain uh, of the 2003 season. Um, I want to first give a shout out to Maurice, to Eric, and to the Nitty Nation for allowing me this platform to talk a little bit about my experience at Penn State. Uh, one of the things they wanted me to talk about was what I learned from uh, Joe Paterno as a coach. I would say uh, the one thing that stood out the most was the importance of education. Uh, going to Penn State, you know, we were highly recruited coming out of high school. And uh, you all remember when we came out of high school, or when we were in high school, 
when the recruiters would come to the house, they would always tell our parents that education was number one, you know, and we knew that wasn't cool. Um, and I want to tell you a quick story of how I realized that Joe truly did care about education. So my freshman year, um, a lot of you may not remember, but I was actually diagnosed with an enzyme and muscle deficiency. Um, I was having a lot of blood loss and muscle tissue loss, and um, I ended up having to go to a bunch of different uh, doctors all over the country, and they ended up telling me I couldn't play football anymore. They were scared I was going to die uh, because my body was basically eating itself up, and it was probably because I was pushing myself too hard. So I remember uh, I was really hurt you know, behind it and wasn't really sure what I was going to do, so I went in to speak to Joe. And he sat me down. He said, look, um, when I was recruiting you, I didn't tell your grandmother that you was going to be a great NFL player, but I did say you was going to get a great education. So if you can't play another down, you're going to go to class and you're going to graduate. And I'm going to make sure you stay on scholarship. And at that point is when I knew um, how important education was because football could end at any moment. Um, the second thing that uh, really stood out to me was uh, about, I, I want to say it was about dealing with um, adversity. Um, you know, before I got to Penn State, I'd already been through a lot, you know. I've been through some tough times with my family and my parents, and I was real insecure, angry. Um, I actually used football to kind of vent because I wasn't great at communicating, um, nor did I think anybody at the school would not understand what I was really going through. So um, I remember when we used to have our big team meetings, Joe used to get up in front of the group he would stand at the podium. And he always had like a piece of a poem or a uh, peach of a motivational speech, um, you know, or some kind of quote. And they used to stick with me. And what I took from it was that we had to go through adversity in order to grow. And adversity actually builds character. So when I think back through some of our tough games, you know, we were down, you know, we all had to believe and come together in order to win. Um, I thought about some of our winter workouts, like how tough they were when you would give everything and you get to the point where you ain't think you had nothing left. But then, you know, between the training staff and your and your and your teammates, they would motivate you to get one more rep, you know. Um, and when I think back through those moments, they weren't they weren't only just helping us grow up, but they were also helping us grow together, you know, as a team. Uh, the third thing that I thought was important was that. Uh, I learned that it wasn't about me. It was about us. You know, when I looked at the shoes we used to wear, you know, we wore Nikes. And Joe had them paint the entire shoe black except for the Nike sign because he didn't want anybody to, you know, stand out. We also didn't have names on the back of our jerseys because he didn't he didn't feel like anybody was an individual. You know, we were a team. Uh, and if it was up to him, he probably would have took the numbers off the uniforms, you know, um, and what I learned from that was it didn't matter if you were the starter, if you were a backup, if you were on special teams, or if you were on a scout team, like everybody had a role and it took all of us in order to win. So the second thing they wanted me to talk to you guys about was um, uh, Coach Franklin. And uh, so, you know, what I thought about him at Penn State. I've only had a chance to meet him one time. And what I can say is this, when I met him, his energy was through the roof, you know, and I had a chance to witness him, you know, with the players. And I can tell he loves his players. And I think that when the players know you care about them and you truly love them, they'll run through a wall for you. And I think uh, that's what will aid him in his continued success, you know, at Penn State. So, uh, you know, in closing, I want to give a shout out, man, to all my teammates. I probably spoke more on this video than you probably ever heard me speak in the four years I was there. Um, but I want to thank you all, you know, for, for being there for me, for helping me to grow, uh, for challenging me. You guys have exposed, exposed my potential, you know, and made me a better person. Um, I've learned so much from you, man. I truly appreciate all of you. To the coaches and the training staff, thank you for being patient with me and my health you know, and looking out for me, you know, um, you were all a part of my development, uh, part of my journey and have helped me to get to where I am today because of what I've learned, you know, through Penn State, I actually came home and started a youth organization called Inspiring Minds. I've used all these tools and all these moments to help kids that were once just like me.
be successful. And uh, so I appreciate that, man. I appreciate everything you guys have done. To all the alumni, you know, and all the fans who cheer us on, we are. Much love. Peace. Hey, Penn State Nation. This is uh, Isaac Smolko, uh, class of 105. And uh, I just want to start by thanking Maurice for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about Joe and experiences there and where the program's moving forward. Um, you know, when, when Maurice asked me to do this, I was uh, very much delighted to do it. And because uh, the program's meant a lot to, to a lot of us and, and it really has um, helped transform us and, and turn us turn us into the men we are today. And, you know, start with Joe, I just really, uh, really value the, the emphasis he put on education for us. He, you know, he came, when we all got there, we were all gonna be the next NFL superstar. And, and that's just not the case for most of us. And so I was um, very happy to have the opportunity to go there and have the emphasis on education stressed so hardly by him and, and because of him and because of that uh, stress on education, there's a lot of us out there with really good jobs doing, doing, doing really good with uh, wonderful families. And you know, without that, that emphasis, I would, have, uh, I would have fallen away, I think. I would have come back and probably done something with my life that, that wouldn't have been nearly as meaningful as, 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 what is what I've been able to do with my education. So I'm very thankful for the fact that you know, he, he stressed that so much to us. And you know, the program now is, is, is doing amazing things. I'm so grateful to, and proud to be a, a Penn State Nittany Lion and, and just be a part of uh, such an amazing organization right now. Coach Franklin has been doing a great job. He's been uh, putting together ph phenomenal classes. And, and on top of that, you know, he, I think he's doing a great job in, in keeping, these, uh, keeping the same requirements as bringing in phenomenal young men. These kids today have been fantastic and they've, they've really represented uh, Penn State really well. And, and I think the, the future is very bright and I, I'm, I'm glad and proud to be a Penn Stater and, and can't wait to watch and, and see what uh, continues to happen, what happens this year and, and um, see the success they have on the field. Uh, again, I, I thank Maurice for this opportunity and um, thank you, Penn State and Indian Nation. We are, we are Penn State. Penn State. We are, we are Penn State. Penn State. Okay, okay. okay. Running through the tunnel with my, with my. Chip, chip. Mazi, Mazi. Nick me nation. Nation. Chip, uh, running. TNT, so explosive. Tommy and Trace, yeah, we got that potion. Number nine, number two, oh, it's an A class. Saturday morning, man, I hope you got your day pass. Ooh, we lit, we, we got that glow. We got 110,000 for show. We bout to, we bout to put on the show. Running through the tunnel, we my like, whoa, here we go. It's like magic. Number nine, the wizard three, TV's like a hat trick. Tommy touched down at night when the light green. TNT, he the next Heisman since Cavaletti. Big 10 chance this year, blue white confetti. Franklin, I know we ready. Franklin, I know we ready. Boom, boom. Oh, you thought it was a flu? Boom, you ain't know boom. we be blue? Boom, you ain't know it's all year? A little bit of mic rob, a little bit of meals? Yeah. Tommy and Trace, explosive. Boom, boom. TNT South, explosive. Boom, boom. Put on a show, running through the tunnel. We're on. If you can have fun while you're working hard, you're gonna do the, you're gonna do the work Nazi. anyway. You're gonna come to, you know, you're gonna come to work, or you're gonna come to practice, and. You're gonna to have to do these, you know, these duties. So we might as well have fun while we're doing it. And then when we want to play on Saturday up. night, I want them to be loose. I want them to be confident. I want the stadium rocking. We had 102,000 at the game we last week. We had 109,000 people. It's a big part. It's a big part. Okay. I feel like I'm the best. I got my number two. I'm ready for the test. SAT. Red shirt it like the rest in my head. I feel like I feel like I'm the best. I'ma do my five years 
and play it like it's chest. I'm a lion in the jungle. Mufasa, I'm the king of the teams of Simba. Can't wait to be the king, okay? We up Penn State, win by any means. Got ice in my veins. I'm cold, J. Cole, watch out. Watch out. 110 man, white out, white out, lions. I'm walking through the tunnel with tunnel vision. I'm on a mission. God gifted with hard work. Call me a Christian. I believe in taking this mission. Any decision, even fourth down and go with four seconds to win it. Uh, chip. Franklin's this mission, any decision, even fourth down and go with four seconds to win it. We are, we are, we are.